Hi, this is Jack Tester. I'm president and CEO of Nexstar, and welcome to another episode of Leadership Lounge. I am in the good fortune to be in New Orleans today. I'm sitting in a little room off a French restaurant, real close to the French Quarter. And across the table for me is a very special person. How are you doing, Mary Jean Anderson? Hi. Thank welcome you for here. having me. I'm so, very excited to be here. So glad you're here. Truly appreciate the invitation. Well, thank you. Thank you. So we're down. You're on the Next Star Board of Directors, and we were in town for a board meeting and doing some long-range planning for Next Star, and you are a part of that. So thank you for that. It's wonderful to get to sit with all these brilliant minds. Really? Yes, really. Well, quite you, an you contributed a lot, and you've been on the board for a couple years now. Right. Right. Right, too. So thank you for that. You're welcome. So I want, um, you have a fascinating story to tell, and I can't wait to get to it. But so what, what I want to do is kind of set the table for that. So tell us about your business today, Mary Jean. Today we are $30 million strong, female owned. We have 190 employees. Wow. We have money in the bank right. and savings, and that wasn't the case when I joined Nexstar. Very cool. Very cool. So your business, $30 million, San Diego, doing plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. All residential service replacement? 100%. 100%, right. right. Very good. Well, first, um, you know, there's 80-some-odd thousand contractors in the United States, and not a lot of them are doing, not many of them, or very few of them. I could probably, less than 100 of them maybe, are doing the kind of job you've done in growing a, a very large, very successful straight service replacement business. So congratulations. Thank you. That's wonderful. It takes... What is it? it takes a village, isn't that right? The, yeah, yeah, it talk does. About that. It's certainly not one person. Well, I, I know there's a lot of people there, and you have a great mm-hmm. team, and I've met a lot of them, and they're mm-hmm. very talented people, right? Yes. But you are the face of the business, Correct. literally. Literally. Your face is on the truck, isn't it? Literally. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important. People want to know who they're doing business with. Right. And you're, you know, with this industry is changing, but, you know, female ownership, you know, I would say when we started Nexstar was a very rare thing. I can maybe think of one that came to mind. Maybe Monica Ryan might have been the first one I met, mm-hmm. who runs a great business still in Houston. Yeah. Right. But then there's more now. Right. Right. They're right, popping right. up and, and folks like you. But still, it's not it's not typical. And I think it's an interesting story. And I want you to tell it. So tell us how you got in the business in well, the industry. I mean. Oh sure. So um, I was a nurse by education and training, mm-hmm. and um, I my husband started the plumbing company. It was a plumbing at that time, 100%, and it was new construction. Okay. And by that was in 1978. 1985, he was really struggling. He was really unhappy. and Working being hard, the, I'm sure. Working hard, yeah. yeah. And um, being that, that personality, if I want to fix it, I want to help, you, I You were the in. fixer. Yeah, I was yeah. the fixer. So I got involved with him. And uh, pre- previous to that, I would do bookkeeping at night, that kind of thing, to keep it going. Okay. But um, that's when I really jumped in and rolled up my sleeves did not like the business model of new construction, I have to t- Why say. Why is that? Just curious. Well, you get paid 90 days later, and okay. you front that whole thing, and they held 10% retention, and okay. there's no way you were going to make 10% profit. So I felt like we were helping other people get rich, and we were always in debt. <laughs> okay. That's the truth. Not a bad way to put it, yeah. right? Yeah. So you, so here you are. You're, you're, are you still a nurse? Or are you working... Uh, not, not, not after 85, I came okay. full into the business. You came full into business. Yeah, so. 83, I started some, but then I quit my job and came full into business in 85. I'm going to tell you that right now, your story is very typical, mm-hmm. right? Husband in the business, tradesman, working hard, mm-hmm. needs some support, wife's got another job, maybe raising a family, and you decide to come in to kind of help out. And that's the office, right? Is that, yes. what I'm, that's that what's happening right now? That's exactly it. How'd yep. it go? Um, we... It was up and down. It was yeah. just up and down, up and down. And um, anytime we started to get ahead, my husband wanted to jump back into new construction because that was his love. That's sure. what he liked to do. That's what he did. He didn't like yeah. service and repair. And at that point, he was doing the repairs, and it was tedious. And he'd rather be out there in the sunshine, you know. Um, he did them on the way by. home from work or something, I suppose, you know. Yeah. yeah I caught a call on the way home. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Many Thanksgivings. You can we remember were, that? <laughs> we, yeah. Uh, yeah, Thanksgivings. No, he missed many Thanksgivings. Okay. Right. Great memories, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that. So tell me about it. How, tell me how the how things how things progressed from that point. Well, um, we it, and it's very difficult. And if there's women out there listening that are in this type of business with their husband, it's a, it's tough okay. to work husband and wife. Very tough. So um, can, we, can you just elaborate? Because I haven't done it. Tell me more. 
Well, you know, you're talking about business and there's disagreements and there's stress and you forgot this and why didn't you do that and yeah. how about, you know, the things that come up and then right. when you're raising a family, it was twice as hard. Yeah. So um, we had the opportunity, we um, were doing some repipes, that's when the whole po CPRC polybutylene deal came down and we were doing a lot of repipes and we were offered a job in Phoenix. Okay. So I went to Phoenix and I was kind of running that and I realized there was a huge need for, um, I'm just being honest, there was a huge need for service and repair there. So I decided to run that. So and you, you kind of commuted to Phoenix I commuted and started to, another business I did. there. Yeah, I was there five years and I built that from zero to five million in five years. All right. Your husband is in San Diego, San Diego at this time. Right. right. And he's getting back into new construction. Okay. So you're doing repipes there, but now he's going back to new construction, new construction that yeah, great life you loved. Yeah. And um, to be honest, with, and it was stressful, and I was staying yeah. there trying to get this going, and he was there, and I was, he was losing money faster than I could make it. And quite frankly, we sat in our, um, our CPA's office, and he said to me, wow, we would have lost this company had you not made the money in Arizona. And the, ma the marriage was really stressed at that point. Yeah. And I was done. It was like that was the final straw. And so we got divorced, okay. continued to work together. He got, he got we, we kind of worked our way back out of new construction again. Okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and then we got divorced. We okay. actually sold the company in Arizona, used the money to get divorced, worked together four years. One day he walked in and said, I don't want to do this anymore. And you, so you moved back to San Diego. I did. Still mm -hmm. working in the business with yes. your, at this time, ex-husband, yes. business partner, I guess. Is partner. That right? yeah. It was easier, actually, I once we were divorced. Okay. Quite, quite honestly, it was easier. What year was this? That was in 1999. Oh, that was okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very and good. we worked together till about 2000. Well, our divorce was final in 2000, so we worked together till late 2004. Okay. And that's when he decided to get out. So what happened then? Is that what, he said, I don't want to be a plumbing contractor anymore? He didn't like service and repair. Because that's, really, that's what you were doing at this time? Right. Well, okay. yeah, because I was kept pushing the service and okay. repair because, Jack, you pay your guys on Friday. You get paid at the door. Yeah. Pay your guys on Friday, and you pay your... Um, you know, your vendors at the end of the month, it's just common sense to right, me. Right. It just makes all the sense. It's not this 90 out. day wait and 10, 10% 10 like, hold. And yeah. 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 Okay. And it just made good business sense. Yeah. And um, he just didn't like it. He didn't like the way the industry was going. He just didn't like it. Okay. And he really wanted, wanted out. So I took out a loan, bought him out. You bought his half out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so now, and, and you just, so you just decided, I'm going to stay in this thing, I'm going to buy him out, and now you're the sole owner in 1999. It was very scary, because I had decided I was done and was just in the middle of getting my real estate license, and he walked in and said, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm done. And I just panicked for a minute and then just took that cannonball spirit that I have and said, I'm going to do this, okay, and that was that. I'm going to go back to that, that cannonball spirit, because that's a name for you, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Then we're going to come back to that. Okay. So remember, listeners, the Cannonball. That's who okay. I'm talking to. So, all I hope right. everyone's not going to call me Cannonball now, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, you referenced it. I know. I know. All right. Um, so, so tell me about your journey after that. So um, it went pretty well because I got a base going in, in service and repair. We rebranded as woman-owned, truly woman-owned. Use the Anderson name. Continue that way. You put yourself way. on the truck then? Yeah, yeah. Now, no woman wants to do that. No one wants a five- foot picture of their face anywhere, but I really believed that that was the right thing to do, was to, to use that opportunity to show it was female owned. Okay. And did the white and pink trucks and- Did you go white and pink right away then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when we rebranded, re yeah, right. in 2006. Right. Okay, so in 2006 you went with the pink, white, and then it's, mm -hmm. now it's clear. You mm -hmm. got you, and you got your like your signature on there, even don't you? Something like that. Or? Um, I have the nobody wows clients that's like what we it is. do. Is the brand? Yeah, okay. that's our tagline. Okay, so you're growing the business. The things are going pretty good. Right, right. I kind of built it on Costco and Nordstrom mixed. Was my head was where my head was going? I mean, that was the the kind of who you wanted to be considered. Yeah, I wanted to be. I wanted to be the best. I didn't care about being the biggest, but I wanted to be the best service provider. And in my mind, I had the Nordstrom theory of customers always right, even when they're wrong. And you give back, and you're you know yeah big give back more. 
and and then of course the Costco, which was the quality that they you know they they service a quality customer that likes quality. Mm -hmm. um, so you thought about them when she, as you were running your yes. business, yes, right? Yeah, read a couple books. So what did you find? What was the first reaction when you when you went? female on the truck when it became evident you just weren't Anderson Plumbing and Heating a family owned business it was Anderson Plumbing and Heating and Cooling a female owned and operated business tell me about that well it wasn't easy I, to be honest with you it was not easy because I, mean, I would literally walk into a PHCC meeting and the circle would close and with not I, you in it you mean with not me okay. <laughs> yeah I mean they, yeah you know just there were a lot of rumors that were in fact we're going to talk a little bit about the book I wrote, and yeah. and re one of the reasons why I wrote the book was to set the record straight. Um, but yeah, it was tough, and and I would um, rumors. I mean, well, you know, yeah, there were okay. ridiculous rumors right, well, that were. We but won't go but there. it was. I, I remember one PHCC contractor said to me, "Well, you've been in business for twenty years. You can't ruin it." You've been around too long. And it was like, in my mind, it was like, it's been run three times already. We fought back every time, you know. <laughs> uh, but it was, uh, you know, it was just the mentality in, you know, of some people, not yeah, all people. Right. But it, as it turned out, Jack, it turned out to be very positive, actually, because it became um, being woman owned gave me a special leverage. So it was rocky at first the way I was accepted by my peers mm -hmm. originally, but then it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, tell me, and, and then from an employee side, of course, you'd been at it for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. You had field workers and office mm -hmm. folks. They knew you had the chops to do it. That mm -hmm. couldn't have been an issue, I wouldn't think. No. Yeah. It wasn't. The people were very loyal. I still have people that you know, was, was have been with me for 25 years. I bet. Won 28 years. So, yeah. Wow, he's that's awesome. The, Waves, <laughs> the Anderson Mostly waves. an upwave, by the up way. Upwave, yeah. yeah. Well, upwave, honestly, when I got, I was running the plumbing business okay. Okay. And decided to start heating and air. And that's when I started Tank. Why is that? Um, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, it, they're, they're... Why'd you get in heating and air at that time? What year was this now? This was in 2000 and, well, I met my husband. My husband now. Brian. And yep. that was his thing. He okay. loved heating and air. And so we started a separate business, a partnership, which was Anderson Heating and Air. Okay. And um, he knew all the technical and the great part about it. You know, the great, he knew yep. everything in the field. And I thought I knew everything in the office, but they're two different businesses. Uh -huh. And so I got off to a very rough start, but we bought a small company, um, Airbest, to start us off. Okay. It was all smoke and mirrors and <sighs> didn't do a great due diligence. Okay. And before you know it, that was in 2008, no, seven. It was 2007. Okay. And then the Great Recession of 2008 okay. and nine. Yeah. And that's when I was desperate and found Nexstar and <clears throat> went to a meeting in Seattle. And um, John Conway told his story about being a million dollars in debt. And guess what? What? I was a million dollars in debt. He said, I was 990000 you know, and he's, it was so cute the way he said it. And I thought, I got you beat sitting in the <laughs> I'm a million. I was a million dollars in debt. Really? Yeah, between buying the company for 500 and then and the recession and not wanting to let go of middle management. And I drove it to the ground and I was very desperate and I didn't know where to go. And I knew I was a hard worker, but you know, Jack, my mom always said, show me your friends and I'll tell you all about you. I heard I've that, heard that from you before. Yes. That's so cool. I live by that. Yeah. And, um, so I found Nexstar because I wanted to find a group of heads that were smarter than I was. I wanted to be, I wanted to Did be the less, least educated in the room. Okay. All right. So you found Nexstar. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened then to you? What happened in your heating and your business? Because it's what I'm getting. The, the picture is, is that plumbing was good. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of had that figured out. Right. Heating and air, you didn't quite get the business model. Nope. You know, struggling, and some could you could rationalize this and say, well, that's because your weather's perfect <laughs> in San Diego, right? Like yeah. Minnesota, where it's 30 below today as we're right. doing this, right? Right. So, um, you know, tell us about what happened then. How how did you get back on your feet? Well, used a credit card to join. Okay. And then I, I Jody, um, Jody, um, 
why am I going blank on her last name? Jody Peter. Jody Peter. Yeah. Was we were assigned to Jody, and I well, I wanted her specifically because I, well, she was a female, and she had run a very successful heating and air conditioning right. company. Right. So our first meeting, I was very direct, and I said, I know you you know that you do this, but I need you to help me figure out how to close this down. And I've got to figure out how to build the plumbing up to pay off the debt I've incurred. And her exact words were, we laugh about this now, whoa, 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 can you just let me hear the story first? I can but, hear her saying yeah, that. Yeah, could you? Yeah. Could you just do that sure. for me? And so I, and, and she just helped me. Next star helped me. I just, I just did everything that I was told to do. Okay. Everything. If she would have said do cartwheels down the hallway, I would have done cartwheels down the hallway. Okay. Failure in our family is not an option. It's just not, that's the way I was raised. And, and so um, I had to figure it out one way, either close it, the heating and air, or build the, you know. And um, when she said, we can fix this, just do what I tell you to do, she had me at that, you know. She, she yeah. had you there, huh? Yeah, she had me there. So that what you, this was in 2008, right? Yes. So the recession was just kinda, mm -hmm. kinda getting rolling. Yes. All right, so tell us what, uh, Tell us, you know, just some some of the, the the lessons learned along the way as you kind of figured it out and got to thirty million. Let's just talk about some important things that happened along mm -hmm, the way. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest for you know, I think back about what really, how did this happen, and I would think it's leaving your ego at the door. I think that um, you know, we come in and you know, like I had done the plumbing okay, it was profitable, it wasn't like it is now after yeah. being a next star member, but it was okay, and I think you kind of think that you've got it figured out. And, um, you know, I meet people and I think their egos get in the way. They okay. really do. And they don't want to ask for help. And being dyslexic as a child, undiagnosed, I learned early to ask for help okay. and to seek help when I needed it. And that's, and I, I know you don't want, this isn't about going on and about, on about Nexstar, but it is for me okay. because I found the help. I, felt I did what I was told to do, and $30 million later, we were at about $6.2 million when we joined Nexstar. Okay. And we're $30 million today. So if you do the math, it's only been 10 years, or yeah, just yeah, about 10, 10 years, because it was yeah. late in eight when yeah. we joined. So just a little over 10 years, and we've been able to go, go up, you know, grow from six to $30 million. That's well, significant. Yeah. That's well, significant. I'm going to take you back, though. Okay. Just, just for a minute. All right. So, you know, you, 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 you left your ego at the door, mm -hmm. you, you, you bumped into Nexstar, I don't know how you did, but you did, and mm -hmm. then you, for some reason you were open. But, you know, let me say something. You'd lost a lot of money up to that point. Mm -hmm. So what, what was preventing you from saying, what am I doing? How do I stop this? How do I, you know, between the zero and, and million, yeah. you know, what happened? Or was it nothing? Well... Somebody said, I don't remember who said, um, revenue solves a lot of problems. Okay. So I thought, okay, if I can get the revenue up and solve these other financial barriers, which, you know, I was overpaying for equipment, I was overpaying for uh, labor, there were a lot of different things I was doing um, yeah. that were wrong. And with the profit pricer and everything that I got from Nexstar, I was able to start understanding. Okay. And, and quite frankly, Jack, I'm a hard worker. I've always been a hard worker. I think being, um, having a hard time in school as a youngster, mm -hmm. I had to work harder than everybody else. So I rolled up my sleeves and I just did what had to be done. Okay. All right. Very good. So, so what, what, what I heard you say though, is that you kind of thought you could kind of sell or grow your way back to making money. Correct. Right. Correct. And then, but that you were you were you were growing the business, but it wasn't it wasn't working, right? Right. On the heating air side, you were right. just it gobbling it up. The overhead right. was gobbling up the the margin dollars. Okay. Right. Got right. It. Well, very cool. Um, so that was kind of the a, a turning point. Just mm -hmm. you, you found some people that could help you grow the HVAC side. You continued to to do what you did on the plumbing side, and, and between 2008 and 2019, here is a 30 million dollar business doing great. <laughs> Can you, I can't even believe it. Pinch me. Like, that, how did this happen? It was never my dream, Jack. It wasn't. I mean, I I wanted to be good. I really wanted to be the best, and maybe that's my upbringing. But I never thought I'd be a 30 million dollar company. But so, we hung our hat on being the best and I was so excited because we already had that vision and I really respect and believe in what our trades 
are all about and what they do. And I look at these guys saying, gosh, you know, it takes them just as long as a doctor to, to, mm -hmm. um, to hone in on their trade. And they are touching things doctors wouldn't, you know, touch in a million years. And they, aren't, they don't get the respect. So that was already in my head. And I loved the people that I worked with. And so that, I think that's how the brand got built, was just right. my love for what they do and the respect for who they really are. So that's, that's interesting. I want to ask you a question because you know, there's a lot of people feel that way, but they don't get to 30 million. Why you? How'd you, how'd you get it? You know, there's a, there's a thing of fixing it and then say, good, you know, or and kind of being okay with being, you know, I don't want to say average because you weren't average at 6 million, you were above average, but... 30 million is a lot. I think I, because I wanted to see other people succeed. There you go. I have to be honest. Okay. okay. I love watching people succeed. Okay. I love seeing people to grow, grow and develop. Okay. I don't know how many next star people do color code, but I'm a blue red, so I've got that. I love. Do you know who else is blue red? Who's that? Me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did hear that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're, we're that kind of leaders where yeah. we really care. When you care about people and then you've got that red that's, you know, achieving, yeah. achieving, and goals. I think that, um, and I just, every time somebody bought a house or drove down my driveway and honked and there was a brand new black convertible Mustang and technician <laughs> said, I want you to see this because I right. got this because of you, it made me want to work harder and harder and got harder. It. And I think that that really is it, is by okay. empowering them to do their jobs with guidelines, of yes, course. Yes, sure. But, but, but believing in them trusting them and um and letting and giving them the space to excel right. it just happened so you you so the just having a growing business provided opportunity for the people that were dedicating their career to anderson and Correct. that and that was something that said i've got to grow this thing not because it's I get to grow this thing. That's a better way to put it. I get, I get to grow you. this I so that you. I can watch these people get opportunities in their life and do things they, they never thought they could do. And if you had a stagnant or just a, yeah, I'm comfortable at wherever I am and just kind of limp through, you wouldn't have provided that. Is that right? Is that fair? That's, ex that's fair. That's a perfect analysis of Very it. good. Yeah. Well, it's well done. Been fun. That's so cool. Well, let's talk now. Um, you know, we jumped through a lot of years there, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it wasn't a straight line, right? right. I'm sure there was <laughs> no, a lot no of ups and downs, lines, and this yeah. and that. A lot of other people helped. You know, I know right. you're 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 such an open person. People, I mean, people are are you know like to spend time with you. You're interesting. You care about. It. You're a good conversationalist. I know that when you come to the Next Star meeting, you know you can get all the help you want from members, not to mention the paid coaches at Next Star. So. Yes. Good personality. True. Thank you. So let's talk about what's going on right now because um, this is your anniversary year, isn't it? Yes. For the business. Tell us yes. about that and what you're doing special for that. So 40th year anniversary, and we had some fun um, stuff going on to celebrate. In addition, I wrote a book, and that's what we talked about where Cannonball came up earlier. Um, it's What's called that? Here Comes Cannonball. And that Cannonball is you, right? Yes, yeah. I'm Cannonball, yeah. the reflections of 40 years in business. Wow. Tell us about why you decided to write a book. I want to set the record straight. Well, yeah. Okay, so originally, I love marketing. So originally, it started as a marketing tool in my head. And um, I wanted to, uh, here's I thought if I could get in front of the customer that needed a $12,000 job done and they wanted to think about it, we could give them the gift, the 40th year, we're telling them we're in business 40 years, here's the story. And I thought they'd probably close with us. So it started that okay. way, but then as I started, right. well, I'm being honest, <laughs> that's, that's what this enough. is about. That's great. And, but then as I started to think more about it, I thought, you know, I want to set the record straight, and I want something for my grand, my grandkids are the world to me, and I wanted something for their how, kids. How many do you have? Five. Oh, my goodness. Four boys and a girl. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's thank awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, so I wanted something for them. And I kind of wanted to set the record straight on how it really went down because I said earlier there were a lot of rumors that were so ridiculous and so really? not true. I did get my ex-husband's blessing on the book, which I really appreciated. Very cool. And yeah, and um, so here it is. So you got the book, and what are you? And, and, and you're just gonna. It's your story of your business. Yeah. And what are you going to do with it? What else? Well, it's the ups and downs of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and I just hope one person will read it and say... You gave me one yesterday. I yes. plan to read it for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I hope someone will read it and say, I can do that. 
I've been there, I understand. Um, I, it, it's more about the journey, um, about being dyslexic and, and struggling and what did school. that do for you? Tell me about that, the, just the, the, the sole dyslexic. And you've mentioned it a bunch of times. It seems to have been something that, that really shaped you in a unique way. And, I, and talk about that. Well, I didn't know what it was. And what did you it, think? Um, I didn't know. I didn't understand. I, I had it down in school. I knew when to cough when it was my turn to read and, and go outside the room. I oh, did my goodness. I did anything to avoid okay. that. And um, I, when my daughter was diagnosed in ninth grade, it all came very, very clear what had been going on. For you. Yes, for me. So, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's the story. And, um, but what it did, and, and I'll go back to the next star, is I, I learned to ask for help. I couldn't depend on me figuring everything out. Um, my mom had my IQ tested because everyone else in the family was doing a good job in school. Why was I struggling? And then I had a very high IQ, which made it worse because not only was I you know, not so great in school, but now I was lazy because obviously I was smart. And that was the, the me- you know, that's the message I heard. I'm not saying that that's what my parents thought, but that's the message I heard. So I learned to work harder than most people. And it does take hard work to be successful, no matter what anybody says, you know, you work smart, but you have to work hard too. You, you have to be dedicated. You do. And so I learned that value. I'm very grateful for that today. If I look back, if there's any, that's one thing I absolutely would never change because it taught me not just to work hard, but to ask for help. And believe it or not, people enjoy helping people. And they'll give you those gifts, those golden nuggets, you know, just like Nextstar does. That's a, that's a great story. So this, this some might call it a weakness, mm-hmm. you know, and, and from that weakness became this incredible strength you've got. Correct. Right? Which is, this, hey, I'm going to raise my hand. I'm not going to sit here in silence and, right. and feel stupid. Like, I should know this because I've, you know, whatever. They just developed that habit, right? Yes, you care to through in others, <laughs> even when you're not reading, right? <laughs> right. right? You're right. still asking questions. And I've seen you. You're very reflective. You know, I, I watch you in a board meeting, and I can tell that you're listening, you're taking notes, and you're, mm-hmm. you're deep in thought. You're not checking your phone. You're not doing all that stuff. I mean, you're, you're in the moment there listening to folks. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to be on the board. I, like I said, um, I really thought I was going to go on the board to give back to people that have been so good to me. And what I'm finding is I'm with all these brilliant minds, and I'm learning even more. And that wasn't the point of it. But, yeah, it's been a fabulous experience. Oh, that's good. That's good. So what's next? What's next for Mary Jean? What's next for well, your journey here? The other reason I wrote the book was I wanted to use this as a platform to get out into the community, and that's what I'm doing starting next week, actually, um, to talk about the issue that we have nationwide in the trades and not being able to find qualified people. Okay. I've been very successful bringing women into the industry. I've had you have women, women technicians. I have women technicians. I have nine today, um, really? and I have That's two great. in our school. We started a school, Anderson Career, Bu- Career Builders Institute. Okay, and I believe that um, that it's and it's necessary. And I want to get out. I want to help people. I want people to understand that this isn't a dirty, nasty, butt crack plumber joke. People, these are intelligent people that have a huge service and really are responsible for the health of the, the right. nation. Seems to be forgotten all the jokes and how we got to where we were. Not anymore. And I think we've got so many young kids that are getting all this college debt and they're working as a barista at Starbucks when there's these six figure jobs. So, my goal, what I call phase or act three, is I really want to get out in the public and I want to get people to understand and I want to bring people to school, um, not necessarily our school, but just to get into the field one way yeah. or another and help um, an industry of dignity. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, that's, that's an awesome, was it third, third act. act? Is that what you call it? The yes, third act? Third I love act. the third act. What would you say, because you let me say that, that you know, the, we're seeing in our classes now uh, a rise in female workforce and the frontline workers, whether it's Correct. You know, tech plumbers, air conditioning mechanics, electricians, et cetera. Um, but you've got nine. And I don't know if a company in America has got nine. I mean, I've seen one or two, or mm-hmm. you know, but not nine. That's a ton. So th- there's a young lady listening to this, uh-huh. and they're, they're 17, 18 years old. Um, what would you say to her about this trade, either as a as a encouragement or even as a watch out or, you know, is it right for you kind of a thing? What would you say? 
I would say there's absolutely no watch out. I think that 78% um, uh, of who we are working with in the home is a female. Our female technicians wait, so they'll go on vacation, say, for two weeks. People will wait a month to have Maria or Katie or Eden <laughs> or all these people in their homes. They want that woman. I bet. That's their gal, and they relate. And um, they tell me that when they do work with men, that as soon as the man knows that understands they know what they're talking about, their guard is down, and they're actually super comfortable. And so they're a really good fit in our industry. And what happened in World War II? When everybody right. went to war, right. women put their pants you know, on and went into the factories. And that's what we have to do today. We have to look, we have to be creative, and we have to look at everyone. Is it easier now to get a female technician started in your business when there's nine versus just one? How, what would you think about, or does that not matter? I mean, it seems like an accommodating environment. You've got a female owner, you know, mm -hmm. you've got nine other folks there versus one. The first one's got to be tough, I would imagine. Yeah, the first one was tough. Um, by the way, she has four, she was sleeping in her car when we brought her in. And she has four children now and just bought her second home. Well, sold one and bought a second home. So she's, she's making $160,000 a year. Oh, yeah. good for her. So, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful story. Yeah. And... Um, and yes, the first one, but once, I, it's a couple of ways that it happened. The word gets out, everybody starts talking about it, and then we literally have had walk-ins um, that said, I, I heard you hire women, you know? I had one gal that was a flooring, flooring person okay. that moved to San Diego. Uh -huh. She saw our trucks, and she walked up to a male technician and said, hey, I see there's a woman on the truck. Does, um, do you hire women? And he said, absolutely, we do. And she walked in, and she turned out to be a great plumber with education. Sure. Yeah, with education and training. Yeah. So we're, we've been very fortunate. And now the word's out. Word's on the street. And so we are, we are getting women applicants. And then we are um, part of our funding for our school is state. Uh -huh. And so we are um, with the state we've agreed, which I wanted to do, is focus on women, mm -hmm. women in the military and the military. So our classes are... Um, our, our, our school revolves around yeah. that sector. Kind of skewed that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's fantastic. So just as a, as a, as a point of clarity, uh, the technicians that work for you, they're, they're doing residential service. They're not on construction crews or anything like right. that. They're running their truck, and they're on all, all both trades that you have? Oh, um, they're either or. Right. But, yes, both trades, plumbing. Right, either or. Plumbing, um, maintenance. We have plumbing, plumbers maintenance technician on the plumbing side, HVAC, uh, service and repair, and maintenance. And we have our top producer in 2018, um, first $2 million close was Eden, who was a Next Star. Um, she worked for a Next Star company in Minnesota, actually. Transferred to San Diego, worked for us as a dispatcher. And if I could say anything to everybody out there is look around at who you've got because she came forward and said, I want, I would love to go into the field. I want to sell. And it was great. Let's test you. Let's see if that's where you would. And she did well in the testing and sold $2 million last she's year. She's a salesperson? She, pardon me? She's a salesperson? Yes. Do she's I, an HVAC sales. Got it. $2 million last so she, year. So she was a dispatcher for you and, mm -hmm. and raised her hand. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe even you kind of encouraged her. I know Absolutely you. Absolutely know. encouraged her. Well, that's yeah. a fantastic story. Yeah, isn't it? It's yeah. great. And the best part was that it was a next star. I mean, she purposely applied with us when she moved from Minnesota because she was looking for a next star company because she loved what next star was doing. It's so cool. So you got a great technician because of next star. that. You know, yeah. what's, what's, I'm going to say this, that no one ever moves from San Diego to Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Just letting you know. Well, it's below 50 below today. I yeah, think. it's yeah. really cold up there right now. So, well, that's that's awesome. Well, congratulations. I've really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. Yeah. I've enjoyed it too. Thanks for letting me share. And if one person out there gets something from it, then this was all worth it, right? Well, I heard a great story. Yeah. I heard um, a lot about about advice you give. Uh, you know, can I keep this going? I want to ask you another question. Sure. Is yeah. it okay? Yeah. Because I've been thinking about your journey and, and this great advice you just gave us at the end of this or recently about, you know, hiring female technicians and how to make that an accommodating workplace. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know you do all that. What advice could you give um, a wife working alongside 
a business like you did. Think back. You could go back today and talk to a younger Mary Jean in that environment about business, about, you know, what would you say? What would you tell yourself? Um, you know, that's an excellent, I love that question. And I'm thinking about it as I'm speaking, yeah. but I would absolutely say date night. I think that you take the business home with you and right. that's hard on a marriage. Yeah. So I would say to try your very best that when you, when you leave for the day, that it's more about the family and not about the business. And then I think a date night would really help. Okay. That if you just made every Friday night or whatever night yeah. a date night where it was just the two of you and not talk about business, but talk about your relationship right. and, and fun things instead of keeping your head into business yeah. 24-7. That's wearing on anybody. It is. You leave, leave it... Uh, you're breathing it, living it, breathing it 24-7. You never get that break. And right. we all need a break, right? And, and do you find now, though, that, that now that your business is successful mm -hmm. and you're not living paycheck to paycheck yeah. and you're not trying to make payroll, right. you know, those stresses, right, right, that you have and, you know, to not pay this vendor, hope he doesn't call, you know, that kind of stuff, that it's possible to do those things in an easier way, meaning that it's, it's, a, it's a real reason to be successful. Because I think it, because I've run businesses where I've mm -hmm. had struggles, and you know what, and I, it's hard to get it out of my head when I'm in trouble, mm -hmm. you know, financially or the business oh, yeah. is struggling. You know, it's just it's it's simple. Say take a date night. How do you take a date night? I don't want a ton of money, right? Right. But I guess what I'm saying is that there's this huge incentive to get it right, mm -hmm. so that you can turn the key in the door, leave, and. It's easier to turn it off. Does that make sense? It is easier to turn it off. I absolutely, totally agree with you. Um, and you know, interesting, I had to do it before. Now, I don't have to do it, and I love it. So it's, when, when that pressure is gone, that um, how do I make payroll, right. uh, that, when that pressure is gone, you really get to do, and as you grow, you get to choose what you like to do in the business. Right. And... Um, I would never be a general manager. Hats off to all you general managers out there. It's a tough job. Um, but I, you get to do what you like, and, and then you love it. It's not something you have to do. You do it because you want to do it. Right. And it, it changes the whole ballpark then. So I, what, I, what I hear here is this, this benefit of growth for you now is, is you know, clearly when you're running a $6 million company and you're kind of in the hole, you're doing everything, right? You're, everything. You're doing everything. You yes. have to, right? You're just... Trying to keep your head above water, you're 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 jumping around the place. You don't choose, you know. If you do do what you want, you go bankrupt. Right. Right. So Absolutely. And I've seen guys, people do that. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to live my own life. And bankruptcies around the corner. Right. I can almost predict it. Agree. Yeah. But now with success, you know, you get to do. You get to wake up and say, "This is the things I'm great at. This is what Mary Jean's great at doing, and maybe the things that only Mary Jean can do well." Mm -hmm. Like marketing, because I know you got a great marketing. Guy. I like the marketing, and I like being the company cheerleader. I love catching people doing things well right. and bringing that to their attention and to the rest of the team's attention. And I don't have to worry anymore about an insurance claim because right. you know that kind of thing or an auto accident. It would weigh so heavy on me, and I don't have to deal with that. I get to hear about it when it's already been handled well. And um, so those stresses are off. I think, honestly, the stress of once you get over that financial hump and you, and you like I said, it's, you're doing it because you want to, not because you have right. to. Right. And that makes life so enjoyable. It really does. Well, I hope people are listening to this because I, I, I've seen this and I felt it myself that, that the reason to grow is to get to that spot not just for your people, right? Not just to create these opportunities to see the, the person, the black Mustang and the yeah. lady who bought the second yeah, house. Right. But mm -hmm. it's also, it's, it's, it's a life for yourself, right? And yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I don't know that this is true, but I'm going to venture it. You're not close to burnout, are you? No. No. I am not close to burnout. It's, I love it. It, it. I do. I love it. And I want to do more. I want to see that's one of the reasons why I want this third act is because now my goal is to bring people yeah. in. I want people to have a mind shift. I want people to right. start thinking about um, 
about not having all this right. college debt, about going into a great trade. I mean, in this trade, you get to help people. You, you, right. you, you get, I mean, you get, if, especially if you're mechanical, you get that yeah. mechanical part, but you get to help people. You get to make lives better. And so it is a just, and it's a great trade for women because women are kind of, we're kind of built that way a lot of us so for bringing women in where they get to do a job where they can be mechanical but they're also helping people right. they're solving problems right. and they get to walk away knowing that they did something you know yeah it's, a, it's something at the end of the day you can see it yes it's a tangible thing yes. you know so often we have jobs where it's like what did i do today i don't know what i did mm -hmm. i'm not sure what i accomplished but i know yeah. with a technician that you know, i did these three things and i got three smiling faces and yes that feels good it does and i get to see so many smiling faces you know, it's just, yeah. it's really, really a fabulous way to go. Yeah. Love it. Well, I just think that, that what I, what I, you know, been at the, you've been at this a while in business, right? Right. And I would imagine that if you were still doing what you did 25 years ago, you might be burned out. Yeah. Oh, oh not absolutely. Might. Not oh, might. absolutely. You know, kind of just kind of making it work and just kind of just eking through and hoping you have a big a big yeah. job or something yeah. comes around or I think I'd be an angry person honestly I think I'd be I'd be grumpy all the time if I still had to live that way yeah but it's when you god when you get to the other side if anybody's struggling out there listening to this don't give up I mean well, never that's why give I hope up. they have this encouragement don't give up because right. once you get to that other side Life is wonderful. It really is. And then you get to choose the part that you like to do. You know, there's all these jobs. You've done them all. Think about that. Right. You've been the bookkeeper. You've been the, you know, you've right. been the dispatcher. You've been the, you've bought the insurance. You've done the marketing. You've done everything. And now you get to watch other people do it. And you can help them from your experience, but let them do their own job with guidelines mm -hmm. and um, empower them and then you get to choose that one thing that you want to do this is i mean i'm i don't know how you listen to this and not get excited about growing a business <laughs> to that pot because yeah. i'm seeing the the, the 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 smile on your face and I'm, yeah. I'm seeing the gratitude in the way you go about your your life and i know that you've earned it and i know that there was a lot of hard work that that there I and mean, i hope there's a young person sitting there saying, this business is hard. You know, this is hard work, you know, male or female. And just know that there's definitely, um, it, the work is worth it. It is worth it. Right? I, I can. The work is worth it. It is worth it. Work smart. What I'm hearing from you is, I'm going to paraphrase some things I heard that I thought was great. What did your mother tell you about your friends? Show me your friends and I'll tell you all right. about you. Right. So you found some successful people that you just, and because of your dyslexia, your willingness to ask questions, you did. You're asking the right people. You continue to be open to feedback, you know. And, exactly. And that's what happened here. And that's what happened. I get the story now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and I found Nexstar. You kind of warned me that you didn't want me to talk a lot about Nexstar, but I have to say that Nexstar was my guiding light. And I would not be where I am today without following the Nexstar training programs and doing exactly what I was told to do. You know? Well, you make it fun for us. Yeah, I can tell you, you that right thank now. You, you make it fun for, for the good people like Jody and a lot of the members you helped and yeah. the rest of our staff. So thank you for that. And thank you for your encouragement. Thank you. Yeah, an example. All right. Don't give up, guys. Just no. do it. Just do it. Just do it. Well, Mary Jean, thank you so much for spending some time here in, in New Orleans. Absolutely. On this. We, uh, and, and all the best on your, I don't want to call it a book tour, but your book yeah. launch, you know, and, and, and all the best on your third act. Thank you. I think you're going to make a huge difference in this industry, and I, I thank you for that. That's my goal. Thank you. Amen. All right, and I thank you all for listening to this very cool, very special edition of Leadership Lounge. This is Jack Tesser with Mary Jean Anderson. I'll catch you next time. Thanks so much.